We have another boxing video. This one looks kind of interesting. This says, what happened to Mayweather's protege? And uh, like I said, Gamboa, just uh, unbelievable speed, movement. And you could say he's really come together, found himself as a professional, as it's shown today. Welcome back to a quick hits here on BLTV Extra. But the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you. He's proud of Jay. On this series, we dig through our personal archive to briefly this recap to a fighter's career. Of I'm thinking of two names like right now. I'm thinking of Adrian Broner and the. Uh... On today's video, we turn the clock back ten or so years and revisit the rise of one of Cuba's Is finest ever one? champions. A man with such freakishly fast hands and feet that comparisons were quickly made to the likes of Manny Pacquiao and Prince Nassim Ahmed. I'm responding to the hype around him, which is extraordinary. If you enjoy our Quick Hit series, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Here now, BLTV presents The Rise of the Cyclone from Guantanamo, a.k.a. Euryarchus Gamboa. Oh, Gamboa. I've heard that name before. Hmm. So it's not the other two. The struggle for a Cuban boxer far surpasses the average setbacks other aspiring pros will encounter across the globe. Behind baseball, boxing is the second most popular sport in the nation. It's profoundly funded and has an array of world-class gyms to perfect. Behind what? Behind baseball. Other aspiring pros will encounter across the globe. Behind baseball, boxing is the second most popular sport in the nation. It's profoundly funded really? and has an array of world-class gyms to perfect the craft. The only real problem, of course, is as a profession, it's banned. Castro took everything. He was wealthy. Yeah, he had money. And Castro took all the property and took all the cash out of the bank. You know, they turned they were communists, so I guess that was basically they had to shut it down. Yeah. The law dates back to mm. 1912, where the government prohibited the sport due to a fear of so rising state violence. Castro shut and it although down. the law has been tweaked over the years, Cuba as a nation hasn't hosted a single professional boxing event since 1962. <laughs> Tenía boxeo profesional y teníamos. Huh. Oh no, we. Oh, we can't hear the men. I was listening to that men. Uh. Oh no, how long is it out for? Oh, there we go. Oh, we'll never know what he said. Surely it wasn't that important. <laughs> Yuriarkis Gamboa, still a teenager at this point, oh, had already established right himself as the brightest prospect in Cuba, dazzling opponents with his swift footwork and blistering hand speed to win consecutive national championships. In 2004, Gamboa won the flyweight gold at the Athens Olympic Games, becoming a national Shit. treasure in the process. Nevertheless, amateur boxing fame rarely correlates to wealth. Gamboa barely had a peso right. to his name, so he, along with fellow teammates Jan Bartholome and Adlanier Solis, devised a plan to sneak out of training camp while on an international tour to defect the country and take up professional boxing abroad. Before Yoriarkis left, he sold his Olympic gold medal to support his family financially. It was a difficult Sold decision it. to make, considering it was his reward for the greatest oh, achievement of his career. But yeah. this was a man that was confident in his ability to make it to the top of the sport, and with it, provide for his family for generations to come. His one, like, physical memento of his, like, achievement is just gone. Damn. That's unfortunate. After three months of essentially hiding to escape capture, Gamboa and his teammates followed in the footsteps of many other Cuban defects and made their way to Miami, Florida to resume full-time boxing training. Holy. Holy. After a few months of training, Gamboa relocated to Germany and I signed his first speed. professional contract with a European promoter. Not just some speed, a Gamboa lot of speed. Is a guy Holy. This crowd has been waiting to see it. He's walking over here with his hands down and shit. But he's the so German quick it doesn't quick matter. Holy. The Cuban is one of their own as he put on consecutive praiseworthy performances around the country. The only downside was gaping holes in Gamboa's game technically, where more often than not, he fought with his hands yeah, down, like hot shot moving shoulder, crazy. the sort of style that can either make or break a fighter depending on their ability to avoid punches by slipping or being able to shrug off right. a solid blow once their opponents connect. 
simply that there are certain fundamental flaws that he shares with Hamed. It didn't take long for Gamboa to eventually return to the States and begin fighting on ESPN's Friday Night Fights. Tagging him with shots to the head. Hands are down. He's full of offense now. That is so dangerous. He's in fiery mode here. Every Your fight. Oh as goodness. dazzling as many of his previous performances like after every were, exchange, still displays the same constant down. holes in his game defensively. Holy. In an attempt to fix those errors, the Gamboa team brought in the world-renowned Cuban coach, Ismael oh, Salas, figuring his defensive techniques could rub off on the young Cuban sooner rather than later. Said you're going to see something different. Where he said, well, I took the fight on quick notice, too. You know, hey, he got time to prepare physically. Ooh. Oh, did not. oh. Wow. Jesus. They have the guard up a bit more. Well, one thing that's for sure, Gamboa's power seemed to be improving. Yet over the next few fights, we saw little development in his defensive game. To be honest, his imperfections right made him more exciting to watch. So you will remain an aggressive fighter. Obviously, when I hit and they pop and I hurt them, they can't continue. And that's a knockout. It makes for very exciting fights. Fight. Is that Fiddy? It's <laughs> Fiddy said. Cuban boxers are often branded as boring by the fans for their safety first point scoring style. Yet Gamboa was the complete opposite. Oh, oh, oh. They are just going down, to war. Shotting, back and forth exchanges, probably more comparable to a Mexican fight. Oh. The fire back on that one. By 2010, Gamboa became a two-weight world champion with less than 20 pro fights to his name. A remarkable feat very few boxers in history have achieved. And a sensational performance That's picking up the dubs, though. From Gamboa. Too sharp, too Quite the wars. Too powerful. While most of the boxing world was still sleeping on Gamboa's talent, the pound-for-pound -pound king, Floyd Mayweather Jr., was one of the first fighters to come forward and sing his praises publicly. Oh. In 2011, Gamboa started training at Mayweather's gym in Las Vegas, where they soon forged a unique bond that looked likely to end up with a promotional deal being tied between the two. Sadly, before things were finalized, Floyd was sent to jail for three months over a domestic violence dispute and his so-called friend, Curtis Jackson, AKA 50 Cent, Pity. stepped up in an attempt to take care of Floyd's promotional business while he was locked up. And by take care of, we mean to steal his most valuable asset in Gamboa by signing him to his own newly founded promotional company, SMS Promotions, Ugh. unbeknownst to Floyd, who sat in a cell. Like, I didn't come to you saying, I'm, I'm going to be a boxing promoter. I want to be in the boxing. I want to do this and do that. Wait, is I'm, this where I'm the beef started? It, and I do enjoy it. I love it from before I even met Floyd. The whole 50 versus Floyd drama that dominated much of the hip hop and boxing news back then was really of no interest or concern to me. At the time, I just remember thinking, huh. what's gonna happen? I wonder if that was like the start for all of this, or was there something else? Cause this has gone on for a while. I don't know whatever started it. But it's just always like existed. Or concern to me. At the time, I just remember thinking, what's gonna happen to Gamboa? It's provided some good memes. <laughs> At this time, Gamboa was rising up the pound for pound list and truly establishing himself as the face of the lower weights in boxing. And this wasn't an untested hype job. Multiple championship level fighters, including Jorge Solis, Orlando Salido, and Hammerfist Farenas, had all felt the full force of Gamboa's startling skill set. With the odd knockdown aside, his oh, 23 wait. opponents so far were all beaten to a pulp inside the distance. As most people apprehended, 50 Cent's interest in boxing quickly dwindled, and Gamboa, <laughs> along with the other fighters 50 signed, were all struggling to get fights signed within the first year of their new contract. Gamboa oh, went from oh. fighting an average of four times a year to maybe one if he was lucky. So the bell sounds, the fight Only comes one. to a finish, the crowd lets out a... Oh man, that's gotta be pretty bad for like his... The inactivity hurt not only Gamboa's his performances activity, due to ring rust, like, but his stature well, yeah, in the scene overall. <laughs> and by the end of 2013, yeah, the man's gonna get he become a what-if story. You don't want that. Crawford. Amid all the promotional negativity, 2014 presented Gamboa with one last chance to regain his Maybe position and respect in the sport. Oh man, that's a dangerous man right there. Terrence Crawford, the newly crowned WBO lightweight champ, was essentially in the same position Gamboa was five or so years prior. Only, the talk Crawford. among avid boxing fans suggested mad. this was more than just a promising prospect. 
His punching power with either hand, defensive prowess, and ability to switch stances effortlessly made a case for him being the most complete young fighter in the world, perhaps even the successor to Floyd and Manny. Still, before Crawford could reap all the praise, he had to overcome a hungry and dedicated Gamboa. The winner of this fight will I've be never the seen their fight, I think. star of the lightweight division. But I do like watching Crawford. I almost equated it to him, and he's the man who works with Crawford in the gym. A great fight, like I expected it to be. But Gamboa has the kind of speed that upsets your expectations. But that, like that, one, two with a right hand landing mm. over the top. While the size difference was apparent, so was the vast gap in hand speed and experience. Gamboa breezed through the opening rounds, catching the slightly cold-looking Crawford with constant eye-catching combinations. And Gamboa lands a left hook and a right hand. He might have saw something bad. Well, but Crawford landed a little left hand. Oh, like ooh. That. Ooh. Like that's a good that. one. Hey, he's catching him. I'm not going to lie, I was kind of expecting Crawford to, like, just... Dominant this. Just to get a draw. With four rounds secured in the bank, Gamboa stepped up the aggression looking for the KO in the fifth. Yet, once again, his over eagerness got the better of him, and Crawford sent him crashing to the camp. Oh! That was it for Gamboa. Game plan was out the window. The calculated point scoring flurries turned well, into desperate swings in an attempt to regain control. And while it made for sensational fight of the year type viewing, Crawford's composure and timing eventually became the deciding factor. Got the legs shaking. Hold it. Crawford going home run shots, bringing them up from the floor, and Gamboa coming Oh! Goodness! That was the one. That right uppercut. Holy. Watching this back gave me an elevated level of respect for both fighters. Crawford displayed all those great attributes I listed earlier, yet ticked off even more boxes by demonstrating a deep level of composure in a fight he was losing convincingly. Gamboa, on the other hand, lost his rag after the first knockdown, but earned the opposing crowd's respect for his bravery and determination. With no referee to step in and close the show, there's That's no it. doubt Yuri Orkins would have kept getting up. I thought Crawford was just going to win. You were but he gave him a challenge. Early. What were you it looks doing like a good fight to just go and watch again. Later in the fight. I have to check that out later. You know, we were just two warriors in the ring trying to get the victory, and he won. Right. And that's where the story ended. At least the freight train won that I will remember Gamboa for. Boxing is a harsh sport that can make or break a fighter overnight. He fought excellently against Crawford, and an organization like the UFC, for example, would have rewarded such an effort with lucrative fights off the bat. Yet in this case, Yoriorkis wasn't presented another title shot for five plus years, and by that time he was 38 and well past his athletic prime. To prepare physically for this, oh! I think it did not. Wow! Boy, did he have some limits. I cover this story today not just because I enjoy shedding light on some slightly lesser-known fighters, but more so for Gamboa's uniqueness as an aggressive Cuban fighter. Not many, if any, boxers from Cuba have ever fought in such an entertaining manner. He didn't quite reach the expectations from pundits like Max Kellerman and Roy Jones Jr., but he did everything in his power to provide for his family Jr. by being the best crazy. and most entertaining fighter he possibly could. That gets my seal of approval, and I hope you guys enjoyed some of these clips as much as I took pleasure in putting them together. It's a shame he couldn't get more, like, activity while under, like, 50s management and shit. I wonder where he would have gone if he would have just stuck with Floyd, if Floyd didn't leave, or any other management. You know, one that actually would have given fights. That was good. I enjoyed that.